Hello and welcome to our next reflection on the life of St. Francis of Assisi. What are some of the qualities uh, of this man? Uh, Thomas of Celano, uh, in this first part of this book about the life of St. Francis, it talks about various instances that highlight who St. Francis was, some of the gifts that he possessed given to him by God for the good of others. He recalls uh, a wonderful, mysterious event. Uh, St. Francis is not present with his brothers. And yet some who are awake see this vision, those who are asleep wake up to the same vision of a chariot going around the place where they are staying. And above this chariot, something like the sun, a ball of fire, going round them. Some wake up in fright, what is happening? Uh, others are just amazed at what they are seeing. And they discover that the conscience of each one is laid bare to the other. They actually are able to see into one another. And then they realized, Thomas of Celano says, that it was the soul of Francis in their midst. His love for his brothers, uh, the care he had for each of them, uh, the Lord gave him this gift of being able to see into the conscience of each one. He had that gift and the ability to see what was troubling them, the kind of temptations they were going through, what was disturbing their peace. And sometimes uh, Francis would first make that move based on that revelation and approach a brother to give him advice, to console, to encourage, before that brother even spoke about what was the matter with him. So St. Francis is somebody uh, who is gifted through his purity in order to see into the heart of each person. St. Francis is in love with Lady Holy Poverty. And that is his title. Remember at the beginning of his conversion, he found a treasure. He found this noble lady whom he was going to marry. Uh, and that lady was Holy Poverty. He safeguarded it zealously. And as we will see from his writings uh, in the next sessions, uh, poverty has to do with the totality of who we are. It covers every aspect of our life. But for Francis, uh, that immediate thing that comes to mind, the material poverty was just as important to him. Uh, it wasn't enough for him to say, you be spiritually poor. Blessed are the poor in spirit. No, St. Francis really fell in love with poverty. He saw this as this unique way of life, as this unique way of following the Lord himself. And so Thomas of Celano reminds us, tells the story, that he wouldn't even allow an extra plate to be left in the house if he could do without it. And so poverty was meant to be visible. It wasn't just a lovely spiritual idea. Poverty meant experiencing want uh, in one's life, experiencing a lack of things. And so that was the beginnings, that was the life of St. Francis. He actually took poverty seriously, if we could use that phrase. He saw it as a special way of salvation for him and for his brothers. And part of that poverty, if you would want to call it that second side of it, the other side of poverty, was also humility. He did many wonderful things. Uh, people began to notice him. 
he stood out, people listened. But he wanted to go unnoticed. He would ask a brother uh, to revile him, uh, to help in that humility. And it wasn't something fake. It wasn't a jest or a gimmick. Uh, St. Francis rejoiced in the truth. And he saw himself literally as a useless servant, as somebody whom the Lord was using, but of itself without the Lord, somebody without any gifts. He was totally convinced that all the good that was coming out of him, all the good that he was doing, was given to him by the Lord himself. And that was the grounding of humility in Francis. To go through life doing so many good things, but to go unnoticed, to remember that the attention of everyone is meant to be on the Lord and not on himself. He had a great desire for martyrdom. He wanted to bear the ultimate witness to the Christian faith. He wanted to be a missionary. He wanted to preach the gospel uh, to the infidels, to those who were not faithful, to those uh, who did not acknowledge God in the same way as the Christians. Remember, this is the time of the Crusades. Uh, this is the times when the Christians are fighting against the Muslims. And Francis wants to go and preach the good news to them as well. His first mission, uh, in about 1212, he wants to go to Syria. He wants to take the ship and go to Syria and preach the gospel. However, he doesn't go that far. He only crosses the Adriatic Sea to the other side. He then goes to Spain again with the same intention. And yet when he reaches Spain, we are told the Lord sends his illness to Francis to stop him from going any further. So the plan of Francis was frustrated a number of times. He couldn't have his wish fulfilled. But that didn't stop Francis from desiring to be this messenger of the gospel to the people far away the people who were seemingly his enemies. And so he takes another journey, and this time arriving in Damietta, and he actually encounters the Sultan, and that's about probably, most likely, in 1219. This is the enemy number one, and yet we know from other sources uh, that Francis encounters the enemy, but really sees a brother. Francis is going there as a brother. And it is because of that faith, because of that conviction, that he is being accepted by the Sultan, and that he is guaranteed a safe passage when so many Christians, so many crusaders, ended up simply being slaughtered. And so St. Francis teaching us teaches something important. He is teaching us the way in which to go about things, the way in which to preach and be a messenger and a witness to the gospel message. Even in his rule, as we will mention at another time, he is telling us the way to preach the gospel. And so that desire takes him, takes him even to those people whom others wanted simply to get rid of. They are our enemy. Francis goes not with a sword, not with any weapon, but with faith. He goes with the gift of his word, with the gift of his heart. He goes to engage with another creature of God. And that is so important even 
to us today. Uh, you don't have to agree with somebody. There will be people we will never agree with. But what does that encounter with the Sultan has to teach us today? How can we disagree with one another and still maintain that relationship of a brother and a sister? How can I engage with you even if I don't agree with you? Even if we don't share a common faith? Can I still remember and hold on to this idea, uh, to this truth of our faith? that God is our Father, He is our Creator, and that our covers every single human being, uh, as well as every living creature. And here Thomas of Celano continues to tell the story of his preaching to birds and the obedience that creatures had towards Francis. Preaching to the birds, that's probably one of the most famous images maybe that Francis is associated with. There he is, singing, praising God, and inviting the creatures around him to do the same. And his first encounter uh, here in this biography uh, tells us that he sees this flock of birds, he rushes towards them, and greets them in the same greeting as he greets the people with, The Lord give you his peace. Peace be with you. And to his amazement, the birds stay in their place. They don't go. And so he preaches to them. He invites them to listen to the word of God. And they respond to him in their way. And so he and the brothers are amazed. Uh, at this miracle and this fact that all of creation uh, is actually able to respond to the word of God in their own unique way. And so St. Francis is shown as somebody uh, because of his submission to God, because of his willingness to do the will of God. Then in their turn, the creatures are submissive to him the creatures recognize in him somebody who is a servant of God. So we have this beautiful image of a man who is becoming year after year more integrated, who within his own being is able to bear an image of harmony, of peace that even other living creatures apart from human beings are able to recognize and respond to. And so let's ask today St. Francis to help us reflect on our own life. Uh, what can we learn from him? How do we apply these lessons into our daily life? What sort of image am I bearing within myself today? Am I that submissive to the will of God in my life? Do I accept it so readily? Am I prepared, like Francis, to let go of everything else in order to do the will of God? Very challenging questions. Uh, but we need to engage with them. And so we pray to St. Francis to help us to engage with those questions. Amen.